Thank you for every day that we have with you, and we pray for your revelation knowledge upon us that we may receive your word today. We want to look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know what's going on. What can I do? Do I have any help? Help. Well, that's what we want to talk about today, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let's start out, first of all, in John chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. John chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. Jesus speaking and saying, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I want you to do. And that's what he's always asked us. If we say, I love you, Jesus, then we're going to do what he asked us to do. That shows our love for him. So then he says, now, if you love me and you do what I asked you to do, then he's going to do this for us. He will give us help like him. He will give us help like he is with us completely to help us to accomplish what he wants us to do. In other words, he said, I'm going to give you another, another helper, another. That another is another of the same kind. In other words, the Holy Spirit is like having Jesus. When you have Holy Spirit in you, you have the same kind of Jesus. You have Jesus in you. It is the identical, another helper. We'll do the same thing like Jesus did. Look at the Gospels. Look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you see what Jesus was doing in his ministry. Then Holy Spirit is going to do the same thing. Another me, Jesus is saying, just like me, another helper. That's what we need to realize. John chapter 14 now, verses 8 and 9, Philip asked Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I not been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus is saying, listen, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you are functioning like Jesus. When Jesus was on the face of the earth, he was functioning like his Father. When we have the Holy Spirit, we are functioning like Jesus. So we have a helper. What is a helper? A helper is one who is called alongside to help. He is there to work through you to accomplish the Father's will. He is a comforter. He is an advocate. He is a counselor. And last but not least, but probably most important, he is an intercessor. And we're going to see what that means as we continue on with our study today. He is an intercessor. 
In John chapter 16, verse 13, says that, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Well, what is truth? Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way and the truth. I am the way and the truth. Jesus is the truth. So when it says that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth, what he's doing, he's guiding you into Jesus so that you can function as Jesus did when he was walking upon the face of the earth. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So therefore, he has the, the ministry, the Holy Spirit has the ministry like Jesus. He can help you overcome, overcome by interceding through you. Turn with me to Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse 26, tells us what the ministry of the Holy Spirit is. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our, our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And when we think of intercession, we think of praying, of interceding for someone's life, and that, that's good. That's, that is right. But interceding means more than that. Interceding, the word means, comes upon someone who has fallen into some kind of uncertain situation, not knowing what to do. Let me repeat that. When the Holy Spirit says he's be interceding, interceding for us, he said, comes upon someone who has fallen into some kind of uncertain situation, not knowing what to do. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes upon us to help us into some kind of situation that we've fallen into and we don't know what to do. Aren't we glad that we have the Holy Spirit to do that? Because he knows what to do at all times. Interceding means also is a person who swiftly swings into action to rescue and deliver. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. To swiftly, he will always, he's right there with you. He's right there with you. He will swiftly swing into action to rescue and deliver you from the situation that you're in. The Holy Spirit knows what you're going through and comes alongside to help. He knows exactly what you're going through. He puts into plan a supernatural plan to rescue you in the situation that you're in. Hallelujah. Well, glory be to God. Glory to God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who intercedes through us. Let's look at an example of that in the book of Acts. Paul, the apostle, was led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to turn to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. And when you're going there, I want to remind you that Paul the apostle said in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, he says, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. In other words, he's saying, I pray in the spirit. I am praying in tongues. I'm praying in the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And when you do that, when you get so full of the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues and pray in the Spirit of the living God, then you can receive revelation knowledge as to what to do. Holy Spirit will be one who's called alongside to help you 
when you've fallen into some kind of uncertain situation, not knowing what to do. And that's what took place in Paul's life as recorded in Acts chapter 27. Let's start out with verse 1. And when it was decided that they should sail to Italy, they delivered Paul and some of the prisoners to one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustan regiment. So here Paul is taking as, as a prisoner, he's taking so that he can be taken to Julius, a centurion of the August, uh, August, Augustan regiment. Now, they're they on this ship, and in verse 3, they landed at Sodom, and then in verse 4, they put the sea there, and all of a sudden, the storm came up. Winds were contrary to says. And then in verse 6, the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy, and he put us on board. So now they switch ships. Now they're going on another ship. Now in verse 9, and when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because of the fast, was already over, Paul advised them. Now here, the storm had gotten worse. Now Paul is speaking up in the midst of all these people. He is giving them an advice what to do. He's saying, men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Where did he get that knowledge from? Remember again that Paul had, is always, he's praying in the spirit. He's, he's praying in the tongues. And when you do that, you're going to receive revelation knowledge to be able to deal with the situation that you've fallen into and you don't know what to do. Now, Paul is getting revelation knowledge as to what's going to take place. He's telling them, listen, this storm is tremendous. It's going to be a disaster. We're going to lose all the ship, all the cargo, and we're going to lose ourselves. So verse 11, nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also, if by any means they should reach Phoenix. So here, they didn't listen to what Paul has said. They said, let's take a vote on this. Let's take a vote on this. And the majority ruled, and we're going to set sail again. We're not going to stay in the harbor we're going to get back on the ship, and we're going to set sail again. Isn't that what takes place sometimes when you have revelation knowledge and you speak up as to what's going to take place? And then the people say, well, well, we're going to take a vote on this. And they voted to, not to follow your instructions. Well, let's see what else can take place here. Going on now to verse 20. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we should be saved was finally given up. It just seemed like the, the, the situation had grown worse. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not sail from Creek and incur this disaster and loss. Boldly, he stood up and said, listen, you made a vote to continue to sail, but you should have listened to me and we shouldn't be in this situation. And now I urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life 
There'll be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. So he's getting new revelation. For there stood to me this night an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and whom I serve. So here, God is sending an angel, now giving more revelation knowledge as to what needs to take place in this difficult situation. When you are in the midst of a situation, you should have already been praying in the Spirit. You should have already been praying and getting ready because something may happen down the road. And when you have prayed in the Spirit and getting revelation knowledge from God, then you will be able to face the situation. Hallelujah. He's saying, now don't, do not be afraid. Paul, you must be brought before Caesar, is what the angel is saying. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God will, that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. So take heart. I've gotten revelation knowledge that if we can run on the ground to an island, that everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. Even though you've made a wrong decision, I've gotten revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit that we're going to be okay. Now, moving right along to verse 31. Paul said to to the centurion and soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. So the sages, they, the soldiers then made the preparation to stay in the ship to make sure that they were going to stay there. They cut, cut away everything. They, they made sure that they threw overboard everything they didn't need. And they were all encouraged, verse 36, and also took food themselves, and in all, the, there were 276 prisoners on the ship. Hallelujah. And all of them are going to be saved. Verse 39, when it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed the bay and the beach, and onto which they planned to run a ship if possible, and they let go of the anchors, let, the, let them down in the sea. Meanwhile, losing the, the rudder ropes, they hoisted the mainsail and, the, and made for shore and striking a place where two seas met. They ran the ship aground and the and prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the way, of the ways, and the soldiers planned us to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swing away, swim away, and escape. But the centurion, warning to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on, on board, soon. Some of all the parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safety to the land. Hallelujah. Paul knew what was going to take place. How did he know what was going to take place? In his life, he's a man of prayer. He's interceding. The Holy Spirit is praying through him. Praying in tongues. He's interceding, meaning that when you come upon a certain situation to fall into that bad situation, not knowing what to do, you will have that revelation knowledge. The Holy Spirit will be there swiftly to rescue you and to deliver you. And that's exactly what took place with Paul and the, the 276 prisoners on the ship. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is your intercessor. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is just waiting. He is just waiting for you to ask for his assistance. 
helping you is part of his ministry to work with you, in you, and through you. So won't you let that take place? Jesus said to his disciples in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, he said, now I want you to wait until you're endued with power. And in Acts 1.8, it says that you shall receive power once the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You see, disciples walking with Jesus had the Holy Spirit at times come upon them as recorded in Matthew chapter 10, and they were doing the same thing that Jesus did. But they did not have the Holy Spirit in them like Jesus. And Jesus said, you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And next thing you know, they were in ministry just like Jesus. They could walk in the power of the Spirit. They could walk in the Spirit that would be interceding through them no matter what situation would come up. He'd make a way of escape. He would make a way. Oh, hallelujah. He would let them know what they to do, what they to say, how to handle the situation every time. Look at the book of Acts. It tells you the ministry of the Holy Spirit interceding, interceding, coming alongside to help, swiftly ministering to them, rescuing them at all times. So, why don't you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, you know, I got the, I got, well, I've got enough. No, we never have enough. Why don't you be so baptized with the Holy Spirit that everything that you need will be added unto you? You'll have what you need. You have revelation knowledge. He can intercede for you at all times. So let me pray for you today. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that those that are listening will pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ask them now. Ask Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And when you do, he'll so fill you that you'll begin to speak in another language that you've never heard before in your life, that you've never experienced before, and you continue to do that, the Holy Spirit will intercede through you, and whatever situation you run up into, he'll have the solution to get you out of it at all times. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you have given us another helper, just like you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you today. In your name, Jesus, we believe and receive. Amen and amen.